Welcome you back tonight. Hope you've had a wonderful day of rest and looking forward to our service tonight and what the Lord has in store for us. Any announcements before we go any further? Okay. How about prayer requests? Miss Terry. Miss Terry's family and all that's going on. Didn't know if you knew heard it this morning or not, but her brother's wife had passed away earlier in the week. Uh, seemingly doing well. Uh, what Terry, I talked to Terry this morning and said it was sort of like Miss Irene, no indication of any heart problems and she just passed away simply. And then this, or last night rather, at 11 o'clock, a little after 11, her brother passed away. That was the husband of the wife. There's so much need in that family right now. Anyone else? How about by the uplifted hand? Let's all go to the Lord in prayer. Brother, uh, Mark, would you lead us in prayer concerning these prayer requests? Dear Heavenly Father, we are just thankful to be here tonight, Lord. We uh, want to lift up all these prayers to you. 
Lord, we uh, have unspoken prayers of people in our family that are unsaved and physical and emotional and spiritual problems. Lord, we just lift them all up to you. And we know, God, that you uh, that you answer things in the way that you see fit. Lord, just, uh, just we pray that you give the service tonight. Give the pastor the words to speak and all to learn something from it. And Lord, we just thank you so much for salvation and all the blessings you've given us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So at this time, we're going to ask Albert and Julie to come up. We're going to sing a couple of songs for you. All right, until you've known the love of God. If you could own all the world and its money, Castles tall enough to reach the sky above. If you could know everything there was to know about life's game, still you've known nothing until you've known the love. You could meet everybody And you could call out every name From here to yon But if you've not come face to face Then you know no one until you've known God and His love. Until you know the loving hand that reaches down to a fallen man and lifts him up from out of sin. Where he has run Until you know Just how it feels To know that God Is really real Then you know nothing Until you know The love of God Until how it feels to you know that God needs really real. Then you know nothing until you know the love of God. 
All right, we're going to pick it up a little bit before you go way back. Now, this, that one's far back enough, but this one goes way Yeah, it way is. Back. Yeah, it is. I'm feeling fine. I hope you are. Well, I woke up this morning feeling fine. I woke up with heaven on my mind. I woke up with joy in my soul. Cause I knew my Lord had control. Well, I knew I was walking in the light. Cause I've been on my knees in the night. And I prayed till the Lord gave a sign. And now I'm feeling mighty fine. Well, I'm feeling mighty fine. Mighty fine. Mighty fine. I got heaven on my mind. Don't you know I want to go? I want to go. Yes, I want to go. This I've been walking with Jesus all the time. We're walking and talking as we climb. We are roll to the sky where I know I live when I die. He's been telling me. All about that land, and he tells me every little bitty thing is grand. And he says that a home will be mine. And now I'm feeling mighty fine. Well, I'm feeling mighty fine. I got head on my mind. On my mind. Head on my mind. Don't you know I want to go? I want to go. Yes, I want to go. Well, it is so good to welcome Sister Ginger and Mike back with us tonight. Amen. So good to see you. Amen. And then also Miss Ellen out of the hospital recuperating, doing much better. Still got a ways to go, but a little bit better. Amen. And able to play the piano. Amen. So God bless you. Appreciate you. And want to welcome each and every one that's here tonight and those watching on Facebook as well. We're going to continue in the book of Romans, chapter 3, verses 13 through 18. Chapter 3, verses 13 through 18. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Our Heavenly Father, as we go through the Scripture tonight, I pray you enlighten us and give us what we need Help us to understand more clearly what the Scripture is speaking of. And I pray that your Holy Spirit will have His way throughout the remainder of this service. In Jesus' name, amen. We are continuing with the message we actually started last week. It's a continuation of 
sin of mankind and his depravity. As we had mentioned last week, Paul is giving us the bad news first. He's telling us how bad we've been, how bad we are, or how mankind we're speaking of. In just a, another message or two, he's going to turn it around and give us the good news, which is through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And so in verses 10 through 12, if you'll remember, he gave us facts concerning man and his sin in the scripture. There were six facts he mentioned, and these are as follows. There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none to do a good, no, not one. And so now we follow up what we have spoken of last week with verses 13 through 18. And Paul is calling out several uh, sinful conducts, if you will. And he uses some of the body language uh, that we're familiar with. And he says he calls out the throat. He calls out the tongue, the lips, the mouth, the feet, the mind, and the eyes. It says they are all filled with sin and rebellion against God. And so we'll look at these uh, as we go through the scripture. Let's turn our attention to verses 13 and 14. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. And so these two scriptures that we are concerning ourselves with tonight, to begin with in verses 13 and 14, Paul has done his homework. And he is actually quoting Old Testament scriptures concerning what he is speaking about with the man, sin of man. And so verses 13 and 14 uh, goes back to Psalm chapter 5 verse 9. And then that will follow up with Psalm 140 verse 3. Listen to those two scriptures. Psalm 5 verse 9. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is very wickedness. Their throat is an open sepulcher. They flatter with their tongue. And then in Psalm 140, we find in verse 3 these words. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Adder's poison is under their lips. Selah. And so these references are going to picture the despicable conduct of mankind through the ages. Paul starts out with the vile use of the throat. Then he mentions the tongue. Then he mentions the lips. Then he closes it all out with the mouth. An open sepulcher is an open grave. And so what he's referring to is a body that has been laid down in a grave, but it's not been covered over. It's open. And so there's a dead body lying in a grave. And you know what happens when you have a dead body lying in a grave? And remember back during Paul's day, uh, they didn't sterilize the body. They didn't have the fluids going through that would keep a body intact for years and years and years. And so the body decayed rather quickly. And with decay come a stench and a smell coming from the open grave. And so an open sepulcher is a shallow grave that contains a body which no dirt has been thrown over. The hot sun beats down and that body begins to decay and the smell rises up and then the disease, if you're not careful, being in contact with that body would help make you unhealthy as deterioration sets in. And so the closer you get, the stronger the stench is. The closer you get, the more apt you are to being affected by the pestilences coming from that rotten course that would endanger your health. And so what Paul's referring to is the words that we speak. It's like an open sepulcher full of rottenness and dead men's bones. And, and the words we speak, if, if we're in a sinful attitude, in a sinful way, they just are a stench. And as we get closer and closer to that individual, many times over, the tongue gives way to the person we truly are. We may can disguise our tongue for a time, but sooner or later, the more we speak, the more we're going to be known 
And so our tongues give us away. Words reveal the condition of our heart. In fact, remember the words of our Savior out of Matthew 12, 34, when he says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So what you believe in your heart is what eventually comes out of your mouth. And it is full of stench. Paul is saying that the throat is to the heart like an open grave is with a corpse laying inside, being exposed. Graves are designed to lay a person in and cover it over with dirt, to respect them and to honor them, and also to protect those who pass by so they don't have to see the disfigurement and deterioration of the body as days prolong and the smell which arises. And so the phrase, the open grave, literally means a yawning grave. Picture a grave yawning. And the stench that comes out of that grave. That's what Paul is relating. The words that we speak is like. When we speak words that are dishonoring to God, he doesn't approve of it. And he doesn't love it at all. The sinful tongue is deceitful above all things. It has been said that a deceitful person has a false tongue, a lying tongue, a cheating tongue, a beguiling tongue, a smooth talking tongue. A deceiving person has a misleading tongue, a treacherous tongue, a deluding tongue, and a flattering tongue. And the tongue practices deceit. That means that we've all been deceitful. No, not one, when he speaks about righteousness. No, not one, when he speaks about being good. And so we were all born with a sin nature. We're all born in sin. And there's none good, no, not one. The only way we become righteous, the only way we become good is through Jesus Christ. When we ask him to save us, to come into our hearts, forgive us of our sin, and he bursts us into the family. That's the only way we can become righteous. And it's not righteousness based on our works. It's his righteousness which covers us. And God sees Jesus Christ, his son righteousness on us. When we think about it, None of us are any good at all. Have you ever noticed you don't have to teach a child to lie? It comes natural. I don't know where they pick it up at. But sooner or later, a child's going to tell a lie to get out of trouble or try to get something they want or a lie for any number of reasons. They might learn it at school. They might learn it from the kid down the street. I know preacher's kids, you got to watch out for those deacon's kids. Huh? And so they, t they tell lies, and we got to teach them to tell the truth. We don't teach them to lie and, and cheat and steal. No, we teach them to do right, obey the authorities in the land, teachers, policemen, parents. And so we have to teach children to do good. Lying just comes naturally. So is the mouth of vile people who use their throat, their tongues, their lips to spew out their poisonous and dangerous words. Sinful men's mouths are foul. Not only that, they're dirty and detestable. Sinful men's mouths are polluted and obscene and profane, filthy, dishonorable, and offensive. Just listen to Brother James out of James chapter 3, verses 2 through 10, as he agrees with the Apostle Paul about the throat as an open grave, the tongue being deceitful, full of daily poison, and the lips which spew it all out. Notice what he says, James 3, verses 2 through 10. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same as a perfect man, and also able to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships which, though they be so great, and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth, and the tongue is a fire." A world of iniquity. 
So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of bees and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed a blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Concerning the lips, when Paul is speaking about the lips, he says, the poison of asp is under their lips. The asp was a certain species of a serpent. Many Bible commentators believe it's the Egyptian cobra who strikes its victim and immediately, if they don't receive help in the immediate time, that poison does its damage. And its venom instantly penetrates the skin and then they're without hope, without remedy. The meaning here is that as poison of the asp is rapid, certain, and spreading through the body and producing death, so are the words of a slanderer who goes to tear down people, ruin their reputations, and destroy their livelihood, quickly destroying the happiness of a man or woman. Why Lives are ruined. Homes are destroyed and marriages are wrecked as a result of lying tongues and lying lips. The idea here is that the tongues of some people have a diabolical nature. So much so they are filled with malice. They are just spewing out anything they can to tear down another person. They set up the harm and inflict punishment. Their poisonous tongue talks and gossips about other people. Their poisonous tongue poisons others' character and reputation. Their poisonous tongue seeks to hurt and destroy other people's lives. Now notice what Paul says as well in verse 14 here. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. This is a reference to Psalm chapter 10 in verse 7. It says these words, Psalm 10, verse 7. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. And so cursing is offensive language that blasphemes God, uses language that may use any small, any, any type of language that may be in cursive language. Uh, you're just trying to say words you don't think is offensive but many others do think it's offensive. And maybe they range from off-color jokes to downright dirty jokes. Or it could be immoral suggestions to propositions even given. Notice that bitterness denotes cruelty, harshness, and maliciousness. James 3.11 says these words, Doth the fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? That's the question. But it's a question he knows the answer to. And it's a question you and I also know the answer to. No, it cannot. A fountain cannot send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter. Listen to what Jesus says out of Matthew chapter 7, verses 17 and 18. Matthew 7, 17 and 18. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit... But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. And so you're going to be one or the other. You will not mix. You may try to disguise your words and fool people, but because of what the heart believes, it comes out eventually through the mouth, through the lips, through the tongue through the throat and you will be known by the words that you speak now notice what it says as Paul continues on in verses 15 through 17 in Romans 3 their feet are swift to shed blood destruction and misery are in their ways and the way of peace have they not known 
And so we've talked about the throat. We've talked about the tongue. We've talked about the lips. We've talked about the mouth. Now he is speaking about the feet and about the mind. The feet mentioned in verse 15, their feet are swift to shed blood and destruction and misery are in their ways and the minds speaking, uh, spoken of in verse 17 and the way of peace have they not known. Paul's on his homework. This is taken out of Isaiah. When Isaiah the prophet wrote these words, look at chapter 59, verse 7 and 8, uh, Isaiah. Their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. The way of peace they know not, and there is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. You know, it amazes me how some people look down on preachers that maybe take some excerpts or, or maybe follow guidelines from other preachers. Paul doing the same thing. Took it right from Isaiah. Took it right from David, the psalmist. And by the way, I heard one preacher say that uh, he may milk a lot of cows, but he turns his own milk. He turns his own butter. And so we use some ideas from others, but we let the Holy Spirit lead us and guide us in all truth. And so as this is taken out of Isaiah 59, 7, 8, the mention of the feet denotes the eagerness of man to run, to commit sin, to commit crime and shed innocent blood. They love to cause pain and ruin the happiness and reputation of others. The reason they do this is because they know not peace themselves. They don't have no peace because they don't have God in their heart who is the God of all peace, who gives us the peace that we desire. And so peace comes from God. So this speaks of the sinner's mind who is always turning and yearning for peace but cannot seek it. Notice verse 18. There is no fear of God before their eyes. So the throat's been mentioned. The tongue's been mentioned. The lips have been mentioned. The mouth's been mentioned. The, uh, when we think about it, the mind's been mentioned. And the feet's been mentioned. And now the eyes are being mentioned. This is taken out of Psalm 36. In verses 1, Psalm 36, verse 1, it says this. The transgression of the wicked saith within my heart that there is no fear of God before his eyes. No fear of God before his eyes. Paul says there is no fear of God before their eyes. Why is it that so many people are messed up today? What's wrong with people? What's wrong? They have no love for one another. They mean to do others harm. They have no patience. If you did them wrong, they're going to get back at you. They're going to do you wrong right back. Why are, our, why are so many of our conversations filled with decay and death coming out of our mouths? Speaking words that tear down instead of build up. Why is our conduct so violent? The answer is found in part through this verse, there is no fear of God before their eyes. They have no fear of God before their eyes. We have become complacent towards God. And when a person becomes complacent, we take sin too lightly. And the reason we take sin lightly is because we take God lightly. Listen, what was sin 50 years ago is still sin. What was sin 100 years ago is still sin today. This book does not change. The only thing that changes is the way we treat God's Word with complacency. And we have grown so accustomed to the way the culture is today because of the television programs, the magazines, the radio. Everything we look at and listen to now has infiltrated our minds and got us thinking more like the world. And a lot of our Christian folks are straddling the fence. They got one foot in the church's door, one foot in the world's door, and they're living one way or another, whatever suits them at that moment in time. To have a fear of God 
One must reverence God to honor Him and love Him. There is no such thing as true repentance apart from godly fear. The average church member today does not want to hear that God is a consuming fire. The average church member today does not want to hear that God is angry with the wicked every day. No, the average church member wants to hear a feel-good message that makes them feel good and walk out the doors and give no thought of God until next Sunday. They want another feel-good message to help them get along through the week. But until a sinner fears God, that sinner will never truly repent of their sin and believe God. Man has chosen not to believe God's Word, but God's Word is true. God's Word is faithful. But we choose not to give God credit for inspiring men of God to write His Word to us. So many are trying to discredit the Word of God today. And they're taking bits and parts out of the Word of God they don't agree with, and especially about the blood of Jesus Christ. And so they're picking and choosing what they want to preach on instead of preaching the whole Word of God from cover to cover. When a man chooses to not believe and trust in God, that is called practical atheism. And there's a lot of Christians that live like that, to be honest with you. They come to church and they listen to the message, they read the Word of God, and, and then they go home and they never pray throughout the week. They never read God's Word throughout the week. They never witness anyone throughout the week. And they're practically an atheist. But then they'll show up to church the next week. But there's no proof in their living from Monday through Saturday. But then they come back to church on Sunday and they think they're doing God a favor as we spoke about this morning. This kind of person knows there's a God. This kind of person knows there's a hell as well as a heaven. This type of person knows he needs to live for the Lord, but he never makes no move to accept Jesus for salvation. He chooses to live his life on his own terms, live in his own way, and live as if there were no God. This frees him from any restrictions he might have on his behavior. So he can live like he chooses and not feel guilty about it. It allows him to do as he pleases. But God has a name for those people. You know what that name is? It's called fool. Fool. It says in Psalm 14, verse 1, The fool have said in his heart, There is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. And I might add, no, not one. Now notice the contrast for the use of the throat, the tongue, the lips, and the mouth from what Paul said to what Isaiah chapter 50 verse 4 says. In Isaiah 50 verse 4 it says, The Lord God had given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakeneth morning by morning, he wakeneth mine ear to hear as the learned. So there's a big contrast from those who seek to do harm and seek to do sin and seek to gossip and slander others to the one that Isaiah speaks of, the use of the tongue to build up and encourage and honor God and give Him praise and glory. So what a contrast. Which one are you in? Which group? But then notice the contrast between the feet that are anxious to run to mischief and run to do harm to the feet that are found in Psalm 119, verses 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So instead of following the feet into trouble and killing and murder and trying to get into all kinds of sin, the feet here mention of those who are trying to follow God's word. Listen to what it says. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet so I can see where I'm walking and I can walk straight towards you and a light unto my path. What a great contrast. So which group are you in? 
The group following to do sin and run into mischief or the group that's following the righteous path and following God's light all the way. But then notice the contrast of the mind. Paul says they don't have no peace. There's no peace in them because they're just filled with sin. But notice what Philippians said. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 7, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Listen, one of the main things this world is seeking today is peace. One of the main things our families are seeking today within the family unit is peace. One of the things that a lot of churches are seeking today is peace. And we can't find peace if our mind is set on sinful things. But we find peace when our mind is set on God. And the God of peace supplies us with that peace. What a great contrast. But then notice the contrast of the eyes. You see, the eyes that long to stay away from God and do mischief, they are quite different from what Psalm 119 verse 118 says. Listen to what it says. Psalm 119, verse 18, rather. Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of the law. Open thou my eyes, that I may behold wondrous things. And so, there is no fear of God before their eyes, because they're filled with sin. But the ones who are filled with love of God... They ask God to open their eyes even more so they can behold his wondrous works and be commanded by his words and, and so will follow his way. I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. The law is speaking of the word of God. So which group are you in today? Are your eyes looking upon the things that you can get yourself in trouble with or are you looking upon the word of God, how to lead you and guide you in a closer walk with him? So I pray as Paul did his homework and he studied the Old Testament scriptures and simply repeated what Isaiah and David and the psalmist had to say that you and I will listen to Paul to what he had to say as he warns us of sin and its grip. And it's going to get better. We're still in the bad news, but we're going to get some good news here after a while, okay? Our Heavenly Father, as we come to this time of invitation, I pray that you would allow us to consider our own hearts and where we're at in our daily walk with you. And if there's any fault that needs to be straightened, any sin that needs to be confessed, any way that we can grow closer, I pray that you would show us tonight. I don't want any of us to be content with the way we are but that we would seek to grow closer to you each and every day. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You've heard the message. How will you respond? Let's all stand. So mind's clear? All right. So guess where we're going to on Wednesday night? Proverbs. Proverbs. Chapter 29. So we'll come back and join us. Amen. I never thought I'd say this. I'll be so glad when we get through. <laughs> 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 I mean, I love it. Don't get me wrong. I understand.
understand. I understand. I understand. He's talking about the bridge. I understand. I did it, Bridget. I got you. I got you. You love me. Amen. I know you love me. All right. All hearts and minds clear. Brother Danny, would you close us in prayer? Gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the word that's been spoken. We thank that you spoke through Brother Lord to get our attention. And Lord, let us go home tonight and just consider half of what he has spoken about, that we can turn our lives more to you and trust you more in the way we should walk. Lord, thank you for everything. Thank you for this church. Thank you for Brother Roy. Thank you for our members who love one another. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen.